I'm Sammy Laycock. I'm Anthony Piani. And we did our research on overpopulation in the American federal prison system. And overpopulation in prisons may seem like an issue that could only occur in third world countries. But in recent years, it's been a major problem in the U.S. So we must ask the question, how can the population of American federal prisons be decreased? There is no doubt that there are multiple pr problems within our American federal prison system. But the most urgent problem that must be faced is the fact that there that it is extremely overpopulated. There are 102 federal prisons in the United States, 13 of which are operating at at least 100% full, and there are 19 others that are operating between 90 and 99% full. So that's 32 of the 102 federal prisons, which is roughly 30% of the federal prisons that are operating with very few to no beds at all. And that is mainly due to the fact that federal prison populations have increased by 700% since 1980. And prison overpopulation is such a problem because those prisoners will not receive the adequate care that they need in terms of health care and mental health care, since there are just so many prisoners for a limited amount of staff to watch over and give care to. And there are, and there are also uh, security issues that come with it, as there are so many prisoners for a limited amount of staff to watch and make sure that they don't escape or anything. And each year, more and more prisoners have been added to the federal system. For example, in 2014, 1.5 million prisoners were incarcerated into the federal prison system, while only 600,000 were released. While some prisoners do die in prison, there have been consistently more people being added into the system than being taken out of the system. In 1986, the Anti-Drug Abuse Act was passed which has the sole purpose of cracking down and ending drug wars. And as you can see, since 1986, there's been a large <coughs> increase in the amount of people incarcerated in federal prisons. <coughs> and overpopulation is a large issue because it's a very costly issue. The cost of housing just one inmate per year ranges from around thirty dollars to $40,000. And that counts in feeding, housing, and just upkeep of the facilities. And that adds up to around $63.4 billion annually. So that is a huge cut out of taxpayers' money. However, overpopulation is not just an issue because of its cost. It is also an issue because it has a huge effect on mental health. And overpopulation can have a adverse effect on prisoners' mental health. Now, there are, there are a high risk of prisoners who have or will develop a mental health condition while in prison. Roughly 20% of prisoners will be admitted with a current, with a current mental health condition, and about 15% will develop one throughout their prison sentence. An additional, in addition to that 35% of prisoners who have or will develop a mental health issue, there's an additional 20% who are considered psychopaths and need to be treated by a psychiatrist. Now, there are also a decent high rate of suicide in prisons. Roughly, there are roughly 20 deaths for every 100,000 prisoners in prison. And this may not seem like a huge number, but this adds up to about 480 deaths per year. And again, this may not seem like a huge number, but prisons have meant this, the prisons have placed that is meant to reform and reintegrate a, pr a prisoner into society, not rather to suicide. Now, <clears throat> how does it apply to a population? Well, there are too many prisoners for psychiatrists to be able to see on a, on a normal basis, as well as the fact that psychiatrists are also forced to work other jobs, like in human resources in prison. Okay, to solve these issues, a solution that addresses the concerns about cause and mental health must be proposed. One solution we came up with is ankle monitoring. Ankle monitors are just a monitor that goes around your ankle, and the convict who is sent to have this must go to the parole officer once every week to check in to see whether they're doing drugs or if they're on the right path to rehabilitation. The benefits of this solution are that it reduces the overpopulation issue significantly, because if convicts are being sent to be at home and to have ankle monitors rather than being in prison facilities, there's obviously going to be a reduction in population. Another benefit is that it costs way less than prison. It costs around two to three thousand dollars for one ankle monitor, and that does not include the parole officer's salary. However, it is a much smaller expense than prison would be. And it also allows convicts to be reintegrated into society because they're allowed to see their families and to work, and there isn't that whole issue about reintegration, as Anthony said. However, there are some limitations to the solution, such as ineffective equipment. Ineffective equipment sometimes means that ankle monitors can be a little touchy. Like you will be in the bounds of your house, but sometimes an ankle monitor might say that you're not, and that would deploy officers unnecessarily because technology isn't 100% effective all the time. Another limitation is missing equipment. In La Crosse County, Wisconsin alone, <coughs> missing equipment costs.
costs around $35,000 a year just for someone like knocking the ankle bracelet off of their ankle. Another, another possible solution is increasing prison staff. Now the benefit to this is that prisoners will be able to get the psychiatric and medical care they need, while at the same time increasing the safety within prisons can be more guards to watch over the prisoners, and the staff will avoid, avoid getting overworked. Now this solution does have some limitations, first being that it's expensive. Prison guards alone will cost anywhere between thirty to seventy thousand dollars per year, and this just costs for one guard. Psychiatrists and medical professionals will often charge more for the services. And there's also still the issue of overcrowding. You'll still have prisons that are operating within ninety-nine to one hundred percent capacity. Our final and what we consider to be our most reasonable solution is the rehabilitation of low-risk offenders instead of incarceration. Rehabilitation gives these low-risk offenders, such as offenders who have been arrested for drug crimes and who are considered not non-violent, it gives them a chance at uh, changing their ways and gives them a better chance at being reintegrated into society. And if a low-risk offender is incarcerated, that can only worsen their behavior since they are with more criminals and more violent criminals and therefore make it more difficult for them to become a functioning member of society again. There are multiple benefits with rehabilitation of low-risk offenders instead of incarceration. First is that it will significantly reduce the prison population since more people will be put into rehabilitation facilities and then eventually back onto the streets and in society instead of sitting in their cell. And it also gives these low-risk offenders a chance at being reintegrated back into society as they can. as it can improve their social skills and also prove, improve their mental health and their health. And there are also, limit, like all solutions, there are limitations and that it is very expensive to improve rehab facilities and also to build new rehab facilities. And there's also a risk involved with putting or taking these offenders out of their cells, putting them in rehabilitation facilities and eventually back on the streets because some could be possibly violent, and uh, so that could. So that can cause problems. And <clears throat> Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas, uh, who is a major opponent against rehabilitation, has stated that the only thing that can come out of taking these prisoners out of their cells is tragedy. While it does have its limitations, we believe that the benefits that rehabilitation provides outweighs its costs. Thank you, and these are our website. Okay. Okay, nice job on time. Okay. Let's start with Anthony. Reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem your group identified? Uh, it probably has to be Sam's research into prison overpopulation and how the actual big of an issue, especially because he talked about how there was 99 to 100, or there was a 30 some odd prisons that are operating between 90 to 100 percent capacity. So I never realized how big of an issue it was at, at the time. Okay. Okay, Haley. What is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research? Well, I would say that our resolution would be rehabilitation, like Sam talked about. And that kind of framed my own research, because although my research didn't really pertain to like overpopulation in prison facilities, it rather referred to like recidivism and employment and life after prison. It helped me sort of find a conclusion for my paper, such as if my conclusion to my paper was that if we rehabilitate criminals, they're less likely to be perceived as violent than nonviolent. So this solution sort of helped me realize that how big of an impact that could have. Okay. And Sam, describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of your group discussions. So one thing that we changed was how Haley in her IRR talked about ban the box, which is for if a if an offender after they're released from prison wants uh, to apply for a job, there's a box that they have to uh, 
fill out that says if they have been arrested or not. And we thought about adding that, but then we decided that instead we should just focus on overpopulation and its solutions. 